Okay, hello everybody. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so where where are we at with the the office? Is everyone settled there? Do we have everyone? Let me just make a quick announcement to see if anybody else. Okay. Are you all set with the lunch room or not? Yeah. Okay. Can I just test? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. You sound thank good. You. I had to re reconnect something so I wanted to make sure. All right. Are we are we good, Lynn? Yeah, Jen is going to come in in about three minutes. She said you're welcome to start. OK, no problem. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for joining everybody. Um, so I'm going to go over uh, a few things here um, regarding Google services. Uh, the first thing I'm going to go over is uh, Google profiles. Let me start sharing my screen here. Okay. All right. And sorry, I'm also controlling the uh, the office computer here. Uh, let me switch this over. Move this. Maybe down here. Okay. Great. So, um, just real quick, show of hands. How many people um, have a personal Gmail account? I see a number of hands. I see at least three, four or more uh, hands. Can't, can't see everybody in the office, but uh, I, so a number of people have personal accounts. Um, so in addition to having that personal account, you now have uh, this TCN Google account uh, that we're going to be using a lot more. So when you're signed in, um, to your browser um, and you want to use multiple accounts, I feel like the way that a lot of people end up doing that is within the browser, they sign into both accounts. And when you're signed into multiple accounts within Google, if you on any Google web page, if you click your icon in the upper right hand corner, it's going to show you all of the accounts that you're currently logged in with. So at the moment I'm logged in as me, Jay Peterson at the clubhouse network.org. And then here, just for demonstration purposes, I signed in with a second account, the tech manager at the clubhouse network.org. This is, I think, a, a problematic user experience. And I think it quickly becomes confusing. Um, you know, for example, let me show you, you know, if you go to any Google web page, if you're signed in with multiple accounts, seems to be a roll of the dice as to which account you're going to see when you go to that page. Like, am I going to see the JSON account? Am I going to see the tech manager account? And then you have to check up here. Well, which account am I? Okay. It looks like it's showing me uh, Google drive for this account, but no, I actually, I want to switch over to the tech manager account. So you're just, you're having to open up pages. You're having to toggle between accounts. You've got multiple tabs open now. One tab is showing you Google Drive for your personal account. One is showing Google Drive for another account. It's just a very confusing user experience, I, I think. There is a way to keep these Google accounts completely separate, and that is using a feature called Chrome Profiles. So let me show you that. Within the web browser, um, it, whether you're aware of it or not, um, you're already signed in the Chrome with a profile. If it is the only profile that you have, um, you're, you're probably not aware that you're logged in with a profile, but, but you are. If you click your icon in the upper right hand corner of Chrome, so not, not within the, the browser, but within Chrome, it's going to show you which profile you're currently using. And if you click the little cog icon here, it's going to come up with a window 
uh, asking who's using Chrome, and it's going to show you all of the profiles that you have set up in your web browser. So at the moment, I just have this one. Uh, I'm signed in with my TCN Google account into this Chrome profile. Now say, for example, I wanted to add my personal account here. I'm going to create another profile. I'm going to go ahead and click Add here. And I'm going to set up a Chrome profile, and I'm going to sign in. You have the option of setting up a profile that's not tied to a Google account. You don't have to sign in, but I strongly recommend signing in uh, to your profile using whichever account it is, your TCN Google account, a personal Google account. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I'm going to sign in with my personal account here. And it's going to prompt you in the process, do you want to turn on sync? Um, so, you know, if you were to sign in to Chrome on another device using the same account, would you see the same bookmarks? Would you have access to the same saved passwords, all of your browser history, all of that? This is the, the way that Google services prefer to work um, with uh, having the sync turned on. Um, so that anything you do on one device is reflected on another device. You know, primarily the, the biggest benefit is having your bookmarks available on any device that you're signed in on. So I recommend turning sync on. I'm going to go ahead and click yes here. And now it is opening up another window for me. And it's opening up a bunch of tabs, setting up uh, resetting up a bunch of extensions that I already had installed. But here I am with a separate window. And it's also showing um, this window in red. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to go back into here and edit this. Um, just to kind of show you what, what you would expect if you were doing this for the first time. Right now it's showing me some configuration that I had already had set up. So I'm just going to revert some of this, and I'm going to close that. So when you're signed in with multiple profiles, what's going to happen is like I'm going to go ahead and completely close out of Chrome here. If you have multiple profiles to choose from, when you open up Chrome, the first thing that you're going to be encountered with is that same dialog window, who's using Chrome. And then you're going to have the option of opening up Chrome with one account or the other. Um, so this is my TCN Google account. You can set it up um, to be visually different from one another. And in addition to being able to name them. So for example, right here on this window, I'm going to go ahead and name these just so I don't mix them up. I'm going to call this my TCN profile. And then I'm going to call this other account my personal profile. And if you go ahead and click the, the little three dots there within the profile, you can click edit. And then you can do some additional customizations. So say, for example, I wanted my TCN Google profile to be blue. Well, now the Chrome experience is blue. And you can also change your avatar. You can either use a, a profile image that you've already uploaded, or you can select a different icon. Now, let me go back into that same dialog. And here on my personal account, I'm going to go ahead and click edit on that profile as well. And I'm going to make this window red. And I'm going to give it, you know, a different icon, you know, say we'll make this a monkey. So if I go into Gmail within my personal profile, so this is showing me just my one account, just my personal Google account. Back here on my TCN profile it is not showing me that personal account at all. It's just showing me 
these two TCN accounts, it's still showing the tech manager one since I'm still signed in there. But you have these two separate windows that are color coded. One is blue, one is red, one is labeled TCN, one is labeled personal. And you're able to keep these windows entirely separate from one another so that as you're using these Google services, you know, we go back here, we go into Google Drive. If I go into Google Drive here within my personal account, you know, I know that anytime I open up Google Drive, it's only showing me Google Drive for my personal account. You know, whereas back here, we know that in this blue window, it's only showing me my TCN account. It's just a, a way of keeping these two ecosystems entirely separate. And when they're not mingling, I think they become a lot less confusing. So real quick, I'm gonna stop sharing. I just wanna take a moment and just open it up for questions. Does anybody have any questions about that? Does that make sense? Is this something that any of you are already using uh, already? Um, got one question, Aviva? Well, I, not a question I wanted to say. I'm using it, but I actually do it a slightly different way. I have two users in two different Chrome profiles set up. So mm -hmm. if I want to access my personal Gmail, I open up one version of Chrome. It's all there. And if yeah. I want to open up my TCN Google account, I open up a completely different Chrome. And then it's automatically there. So I I actually prefer that it's not in like the multiple tabs, but now that I see the color coding, that's also really handy. So I just wanted to say that that's when you set, you set that up for me, I'm, I'm sure, because I don't know how to do that. So mm -hmm. what, what I think you're describing is that you, you've got two different sets of Chrome shortcuts on your desktop, is that correct? Yep. So the one shortcut is opening up your one profile and the other shortcut is opening up the other profile. You have yes. multiple profiles set up, you just yep. have the convenience of having the shortcuts on the desktop yes. that automatically open one or the other. Yes, and, and when I when I open uh, up yeah. Chrome, it actually asks me what profile will you be using. Yes. Yep. Great. Yeah. Any any other questions about setting up Chrome profiles? Uh, one other, not not a question. Another thing to name is um, when you have them open, you can have both profiles open and down in your um, taskbar. Yes. Do Chrome icons that are there, and they have the little icons associated with your different profiles. So mm -hmm. again, it's easy to just kind of see um, where to how to navigate back and forth. So it does a really good job of making it clear within the taskbar too of finding work or work or personal. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. All right, if there are no other questions about that, I wanna quick jump back into screen sharing and I wanna talk more about Google Drive. Let me share my screen. Okay, so back here in Google, Google Drive, I wanna make sure that everybody is aware of this feature because if you've only used Google Drive in a personal capacity, you might not have even seen that there is an entirely other feature within Google Drive that is available to you. Um, you are probably already familiar with My Drive. So if you're looking over here on the left-hand side, one of the options is My Drive, and that's where it defaults. If you're going into Google Drive for the first time, it's defaulting to this tab. In My Drive, these are all of your personal files. These files are owned by you. Nobody else can access them unless you change the sharing settings to make them available to other people. Anything that you store here within My Drive counts towards your total account storage. This is something that we didn't, um, we never really ran into any issues with this with Microsoft. Um, not anticipating running into any issues with Google, but I wanted to just mention with, with our Microsoft accounts, we, we had, I believe, 50 gigabytes of storage for every user, and we never really ran a risk of exceeding that with anybody. We have a, a bit less with Google. Uh, we have 30 gigabytes of storage. 
And on a lot of uh, Google pages, including Google Drive, Gmail, you're going to see somewhere in the window that it's showing you the amount of storage that you're using. Here within Google Drive, it's here in the lower left-hand corner. It's showing me that I'm currently using 3.9 gigabytes out of 30 gigabytes of storage. So very low number, not nearly at risk of exceeding that. The way that Google calculates storage is that it is the entirety of everything you're storing among numerous different services. So things that count towards that 30 gigabytes include your emails. It includes everything that you have here within my drive. If you use Google Photos, anything that you have stored in Google Photos also counts towards that. And there might be some other services that count towards that 30 gigabytes as well. But in addition to my drive, um, that you're gonna see here in your TCN Google account, you have an option just below it called shared drives. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, this functions entirely different from the way that my drive functions. Shared drives are um, member-based folders. So these are all shared drives that we're currently utilizing with TCN. Uh, the one that everybody should see, uh, everybody has access to at the moment, is network staff. We can see here under members, everybody here at the organization is a member. So anything inside of these shared drives is not owned by any one individual. If you create a file that's here within this shared drive, it's collectively owned by all of the members of that shared drive. So in the case of network staff, the entire team has a collective ownership of everything in it. Everybody has equal access to these files and folders within here. And anything that we do within this shared drive ecosystem, no matter how many shared drives we create, no matter how much data we use, it does not count towards anybody's individual storage. So anything that we do in here is not counting towards this 30 gigabytes that everybody has in their accounts. What we're thinking of doing with SharePoint, the way that SharePoint is currently set up, it's just one big bucket. Everything is in this one bucket. Everybody has access to it. What we're thinking of doing is breaking that up into multiple shared drives. So really taking a look at what we have in SharePoint and considering, you know, what is it that everybody needs access to? What is it that only certain individual staff people need access to? What is it that only, you know, small teams within TCN need access to? And then creating shared drives that just have a membership you know for that particular content and then you know not inviting people to those shared drives who don't need access to those files and the intention is not to you know withhold documents from people you know to take away access to things that people used to have access to it's just that you know i know you know i'm sure you're aware that you know no no one individual needs access to everything that we have in SharePoint. And it because it is so massive, it's just clutter. Um, it's, it's hard to find things because of how much stuff there is. And so if we can just hide things from people who, you know, it doesn't affect for, for people who don't need access to certain folders, certain documents, it's just going to clean up the experience for everybody. Um, with that, I, I want to pass it over to Cassandra. I'm going to stop uh, screen sharing. Um, Cassandra is going to share how she currently utilizes the, the shared drive ecosystem with CZC Pathways. Um, Cassandra, I think I'm going to have to make you a co-host here, yep. uh, unless you're already a co-host. No, I nope, don't think you're I'm not. Not. 
not a co-host. All right, there you go. All right, thanks, Jason. Yeah. So Jason asked me to share uh, how I use the drive for C2C Pathways. And actually, it's a really huge component of the work that we're doing since it's um, C2C Pathways is a community of practice. There's a lot of shared information. There's a lot of collaboration that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and kind of give you guys a heads up on how I use it. Um, and then if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them uh, as we go along. So let me go ahead and do that. OK, can everyone see that? OK, perfect. Yep. So um, as Jason mentioned, there, you know, there are a couple of different options on the side in Google. Typically, folks hang out in my drive. And this is kind of what mine looks like. I have different folders and whatnot, organizing my different roles, responsibilities, things, et cetera. Um, but for Pathways, um, something that Aviva started doing and that I've continued doing is uh, working with uh, shared drives. And so if you, you, know, you come over here, you can see all the different shared drives that I have access to. So like Jason mentioned, I have access to that network staff one. Um, Jake and Jason actually gave me um, permission to access the media archive because that's where I store uh, recordings of Zoom, um, and I'll show you how that kind of comes back into play later with the, with the Google Drive for C2C Pathways. And then um, each year uh, that we have Pathways, we actually create a new drive. So we actually have a few older drives that probably need to be kind of cleaned out. They could probably be deleted. So once you're done, like if you have a drive from a previous program year and you're not quite ready to get rid of it, but you don't want to see it, uh, a really cool feature is if you go up to the side over here, it says hidden shared drives. So if I click on that, you can see these are all the previous C2C Pathways program years and other things that have kind of gone on with the program that I don't necessarily need right now, but I might need, still need to reference at some point. So I haven't deleted them or um, anything like that. So then I can pop back over to what is relevant. So right now I have two shared drives that I'm working on. So one is the current year for C2C Pathways, so 2021, 2022. And then this one is one that I'm building out for this upcoming program year. And so little by little, I'm adding different components and elements from this drive over here, adding some new pieces and doing some redesigning. Um, but what I'll actually give you a tour of is uh, this year's, and then I can pop over real quick and kind of show you what's been trans transferred over to um, the upcoming program year. So pop in here. You can see we have, I, I have a specific kind of organizational system set up. Um, so what typically happens is at the beginning of the program year, I ask all of the sites that are participating in the program, facilitators, CBOs, uh, and uh, team tech center coordinators, uh, who needs access. They give me a Gmail account, and then I can add them to the drive. And you can do that by going up to the corner over here where it says manage members. And you can see all the different people that have access to this current year's drive. So these are all the different facilitators, all the different people in C2C Pathways that need access to the drive. You can also change um, how they interact with the drive. So everyone here is a content manager because people, I ask people to upload documents, people are downloading documents, they're manipulating different documents that we have in here. So for me, it's just easier to have everyone as a content manager, but you can set people to be viewers, commenters, contributors, where they can add files but not delete files, and then managers, and then you can also remove access. So that's a really cool feature. Um, so as Jason mentioned, you can pick and choose who you want to add to a shared drive, which is really helpful, especially um, when we're talking about securing data that we're working with, namely youth information or information about employers that we're working with. So it's really helpful to have a secure drive where you can manage who gets access to what. But one of the things that me and Aviva ran into is that at different points of time throughout the program year, other people will sit in for meetings or will need access to different pieces of the drive. And so we don't wanna give access to the whole thing, but we do wanna kind of parse out different ways that people can access different things. So one of the things we, we, we brainstormed and figured out was a way to add an open folder to a shared drive. So this is something we actually came up with last year. Um, so what that basically means is I have a, so this welcome folder, while it's in, uh, in the secure Google Drive, it's actually open to whoever has a link. And that means that anyone can access this folder, but not, anyone, not anything else on the drive. And so how I did that is in my personal drive, I actually have a folder. I made that open um, 
And then I created a shortcut and that shortcut lives in the secure drive. So there's a little bit of kind of negotiating that I did in order to make that work. And you can see that it's um, a shortcut and not just a folder in the drive. Is in the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like a little arrow over here. That means that it's actually not a folder that was created in the drive. It was something that was um, shared. Yeah, it is nifty. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. <laughs> just, just a quick thing to add, although the shortcut is here within shared drive, mm -hmm. because it's directing you to a folder that's in my drive, just keep in mind that anything that anybody uploads is actually ending up in Cassandra's personal one, uh, my drive. Right, yeah, that's a good point to make. And so with that, I'll take you into this folder so you can see what's in here. So there's not a ton, um, but it is things that everyone would need access to, whether or not they're um, a facilitator. Uh, so for example, one of those things is our contact sheet. So we keep a contact sheet that needs to be updated regularly. And this is useful when you have a facilitator leave, a new staff member join, sometimes a CBO or someone's taking over, someone's going on sabbatical, whatever it is, and other people need to update this document so it needs to be accessible. So our contact sheet actually lives in this open folder. Another thing that's really useful to put in an open folder like this is our uh, attendance. And again, um, typically you'll have a CDC facilitator join a call, but let's say so, like that person can't make it and someone else is coming in, I still need them to sign in for their site. And this is just an easy way to make sure that they can access the attendance sheet. What was happening prior to us doing this open folder is that people are trying to sign in or add their name to the attendance. And they're like, I need access to the drive. And it became a whole messy headache. <laughs> and so we're like, let's just put it in an open folder. So anyone, so as soon as I share the link, anyone can access it. And then if someone's sitting in for someone else, they can just add attendance and we're good to go. So that was the primary reason for doing this. Other things that live in here, we have um, the RFPs from that program year. We have webinar um, slides. Uh, if there are additional like internship opportunities or other opportunities, um, and flyers that people want to share with the whole group, but I don't want them to have access to the entire drive. Um, they can add it here. National partners. So we don't want national partners having access to our entire drive, but they have a folder in this open folder. Um, and so what's really nice about it is it just kind of centralizes it. It makes it easy for everyone to go to one place, which is our drive and be able to access multiple things, but with um, different permissions. Another example of this that doesn't quite function the same way, um, it's just a kind of normal share of a folder in a drive, is youth tracking. So one of the things we do for C2C Pathways is track um, the youth that are participating in the program, um, the internships that they're doing, all of that type of stuff. So Informing Change, who's our evaluator, they have access to this folder and they actually have their own folder in here where they upload materials, resources, things that they need facilitators to, to check on, links to surveys. That's all nested into, um, into the drive, into a separate folder, and then they have access to a folder that they can dump things into. So there's a lot of kind of layers and levels to this, but it makes it really easy again, because all facilitators have to do is access our drive and they have all these different places where they can do things that are being asked of them during the program year. And then uh, folders that get utilized that are open for facilitators that kind of tie back into how the drive functions are um, planning. So we have a whole planning section where people are encouraged to share templates for different pieces of the program. So we have folders for activities uh, that are being run with youth, agendas, program your applications, curriculum, program your timelines. And throughout the year, if people have really good examples of things, I'll say, go onto the drive and drop it into this folder. Or I can take a link and share it on Slack since we have a Slack channel and say, hey, everyone dump your example of this application into this folder or share some curriculum or whatever it is. So that makes it really simple that it interfaces with Slack as well. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you is uh, the resources. So one of the things we utilized this year for onboarding was um, like a list of all the recordings. So every meeting we had from September up until January was recorded because there was a lot of really important information. A lot of times uh, there's facilitator turnover. And so you have people starting the program in the middle of the year and they're not sure what's going on. So me and Aviva talked about um, just having an archive of all the um, meetings that we've had from the beginning of the year up until a certain point. So uh, as part of the onboarding process, folks can just go in and kind of access different things. So what we came up with was this sheet. Give me a second to load. 
And what it basically is, is a list of all of our meetings in chronological order from beginning to end. It has the dates, it has a link. And so this is kind of where it comes back into play with the, the rest of the drive. I upload and sh uh, save the videos, the Zoom recordings in a different drive. So that media folder that you guys saw earlier, there's a folder in there where I save all of the, the Zoom recordings. Um, and then I grab links and I add them to, to here. So they can, so folks can access the videos, but they can't access the folder because you can toggle and change permissions, if that makes sense. So anyway, all the videos are, are stored on a different drive, but everyone has access because of the links, because of the permissions on the links, all the links go into this document. And then there's a description of each video. So if someone's like, oh, I really need to know I need to go back to that meeting with informing change. They can go and find the date. They can figure out which meeting it was, read a brief description, click on it, and it'll actually take them to um, the video. I also like to turn this into a PDF and send it with onboarding documents when they're brand new facilitators. And I say, hey, when you have some time, go back and look through some of our old uh, meeting recordings so you can get up to speed with the program, kind of know what's going on. Um, and so that's just another clever way that I use um, the drive. And then uh, one last thing, uh, I know that was the last thing, but the last last thing that I want to share is um, for those of you that are that have some interplay between your personal Gmail and um, a drive or kind of your work Gmail account, something that I like to use so that I'm not toggling and opening different things or signing on to my personal Gmail on our work computer is I actually create what I call a portal <laughs> between my drive and then this drive. And so I'll take you back to my drive real quick. It's basically the same system that I talked about earlier with this, the, the shared folder. So I created a folder on my personal Gmail. I shared it with my work Gmail and it, it's a shortcut. And basically what I do is if I need to transfer documents between it, like let's say I have something from my personal Gmail that I need to transfer to my work Gmail. I will put it, I will sign on to my work Gmail, which I can do on my phone. I'll drop something in there. I'll, you know, and then I'll log on to my work Gmail and I can pull it out of the folder and move it. So it's like a portal between two different destinations. So that's just a really quick way for me to move documents because I have things on like my phone that I want to move to, you know, the computer. That's a quick way for me to kind of toggle and move things in between different spaces. So I'll stop sharing. Yeah, so those are just a couple of the ways that I like to kind of navigate and use Google Drive. Again, it's a huge component of our community of practice because so much needs to be shared and managed. The other great thing about using the Drive um, with our facilitators is that I encourage them to use it with their youth. It's been really beneficial when folks have had to go virtual because mm -hmm. youth can continue to work on collaborative projects, things like that. So overall, I'm a huge proponent of the Drive. Um, and there are really cool ways that you can kind of layer and nest things and kind of share things. Um, so that's that's some of the ways that I use it. So I'll pause and see if there are any questions about any of that. I have one, Cassandra. Um, thank you for sharing that because I feel like I just got a master class in grant management with just like your organization system. And um, I got a lot of ideas for impacts. My question I think is probably more for Jason, but um, so I'm wondering if you foresee uh, Google replacing how we currently use Clubhouse Connect communities. Uh, for impacts, we used to use um, Google for impacts 2.0. And then with it, when Clubhouse Connect came along, we kind of migrated to Clubhouse Connect. And that's how I currently store like documents and templates and resources I want to share. But I like Google better because there's more ownership for um, users to access and upload and, you know, edit their own documents. So for things like impacts, I know like um, geographic liaisons have communities for their regions. Like I have one for the Southeast. Do you foresee us transferring it over to Google? That's a really good question. I don't know how to answer it. Uh, to, to be perfectly honest. I mean, on the one hand, we, you know, Clubhouse Connect is a platform that we are trying to support and bolster and use as much as we possibly can. On the other hand, I want you to have the tools that you need to do the best work that you can. Uh, and if it makes more sense for you to be operating within Google Drive versus Clubhouse Connect, I wouldn't want to be the person to tell you no. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to 
I would also be hesitant to say to everybody, okay, jump off of Clubhouse Connect and use Google Drive. Like I don't, I don't really want to say that either. So I'm not choice. sure. <laughs> not, not sure how to answer that. Uh, Cassandra. Yeah, so I can jump onto that. So I, we actually use a combination of both. So this might help answer your question, Jen. So I tend to use Clubhouse Connect for broader things that need to be like researchable or shared across the board. So for example, like we have curriculum that's tied to CDC pathways that folks can't that folks can choose to use if they want. It makes more sense to store that on Clubhouse Connect because of like the sheer amount of volume of what's there and it's more like an independently accessible kind of resource. So that's the way I see Clubhouse Connect is it's a great place for kind of independently accessing bulk resources. So maybe like toolkits or curriculums or like different things like that. And then I also encourage people to use it because it um, folks can uh, use the, the, the message board feature and the, the room feature to kind of talk and kind of put things out to the larger network. So I really mm -hmm. kind of encourage people to use that space for that. Google Drive is really good for like the, the really refined um, detailed work that we need to do day to day. So like specific like documents that are being created or workshops that are being created. Um, it's really good for that. Um, or like tracking documents just because you have Google Sheets. So that's really how I kind of differentiate for folks is that um, if there's something, if it's a bulk resource that needs to be kind of stored someplace that can be referenced and kind of like looked up almost like a library, that's what I use Clubhouse Connect for. And then if we're doing like a lot of interactive work where we have to share documents, modify documents and kind of co-create things, then I tend to um, lean on uh, the drive for that. Uh, Renee, I see your hand up, go ahead. Yeah. Um, oh, we got an echo, hold on a second. I'm gonna do this you, here. Yeah, okay. you would want to. Yep, go ahead. You got it. Uh, um, totally this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to the to the uh, multiverses out there, um, Cassandra, I guess I'm curious about whether you've tried this um, Google Drive, um, sh having a shared drive uh, for your um, U.S. Central region, um, and just in general, what thoughts either of you might have about. Um, using this as a geo with one's region. I mean, I can't really think of a reason not to, but just wondering if um, either of you have any thoughts about uh, pitfalls or things to think about um, yeah. using it for, for geo stuff. That's a great question. And actually the answer is yes, I do. So <laughs> let, me, let me share that just real quick. And then I actually have to jump here in a, in a minute because I have to lead our pre-kickoff for CDC Pathways. Um, okay, so I'm gonna jump back to my drive. Can everyone see that? So yes. if we bounce over to, I have a geo liaison folder. These are all things that I can see. So these are all things pertaining to like my work as a geo that only I have access to. But within this folder, I have this, and I like to color code. I have this red folder, um, which is shared with my entire region. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I pop into there, you can see we have a lot of resources that are shared that pertain back to the regional team summit. Uh, everyone has access to this. I like to keep, I always like to keep a Google sheet in these drives because I use them for attendance. I also use them to ask questions and gather information in a very streamlined way. Um, but to answer your question, yes. So this has been a really helpful resource. I can have different people dump things in here. For instance, you know, we're, we're kind of figuring out what we're gonna do with our event swag. So we have like quotes and stuff in one folder. Um, someone shared a QR code on here so everyone could drop, jump on a group me. So people could just go onto the drive, grab the code and then jump onto a group me. Uh, we've done brainstorming activities. So we've used the Jamboard to kind of brainstorm ideas for the summit um, and that lives there. So everyone can access and go back and add to it. Um, if we needed to create um, like different surveys for events and stuff like that, people could create it here and then everyone has access to share it. So I guess the short answer is yes, like it is a really good tool for co-collaboration. And then another thing I like to do is I like to keep the link to the drive and to our attendance in our calendar invite. So the calendar invites reoccurring. And so if anyone ever needs to access it, they can go in and it's the link to the folders always there. And then the link to uh, our attendance sheets always there. So it's always accessible. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably 
Um, thank you so much, Cassandra. I learned a lot here. I think you've you've utilized Google Drive in a lot of really clever ways, and you showed me something that I, I didn't know about, which is that you're able to hide shared drives. That was something that I was not aware of. So thank you for letting oh, me no know problem. about that. I know you've got to jump off now. I did want to quick screen share and show everybody just one more really brief thing. Um, let me share my screen here. I just wanted to make sure that everybody is aware that on any Google site, um, it, you've got the, the sort of waffle icon or nine dots. I, I don't know what to call it. If you click on it, this is your kind of quick access to different Google uh, services. And you are able to customize this by just clicking and dragging. So say, for example, you know, the things you use the most are Gmail, Drive, Google Meet, just click and drag and reorganize this and it's going to save it. So anytime you open up this, uh, it's going to give you quick access to the things that you use the most. And just a really quick mention for anyone who, who's not aware, Google Meet is Google's version of video conferencing and it's pretty good. I, I still think that there is room for Zoom within our processes as an organization. But I think that a lot of our meetings could move over to Google Meet. Um, so I recommend this is something that you have access to right now. Uh, you can give it a try at any time. Um, I see Brendan's hand is up. I know we only have a few minutes left. I'm happy to go a little bit longer for anyone who's able to stay for a few uh, extra minutes. I will answer questions for as long as there are questions, but, uh, Brendan. Yeah, thanks. I just, um, with those questions that were coming up about um, communities of practice and geos, I wanted to share as myself, Jason, and Ruben were thinking about this decision. And I think one of the biggest determining factors was the overarching theme of collaboration that really led us towards Google um, and how that both internal collaboration on files, on documents, on sharing, external community collaboration with regions, with sites, communities of practice. I think was really like the tipping point where we were, we were saying that is such an essential piece of how we operate is this idea of collaboration. Um, and so while right now, like we're focusing on the actual migration piece, I think there's so much potential and ideas of how we could utilize this to help with collaboration internally and externally with communities of practice. So as other ideas come up, like, yeah, I would love to think more about this and put things in place of just see how we can really maximize um, the, the collaboration opportunities that um, Google brings with it. Definitely. Thank you, Brandon. Heather. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been really helpful. Um, I, I definitely learned a lot and I'm excited now about that shortcut um, folder portal trick that Cassandra showed us. Um, so I understand that we'll be transferring our files and using the drive as like our management tool and whatnot. I'm wondering if we'll still have access to Microsoft Word and Excel or if we'll only be using the sheets and the docs. That's a very good question. So um, <coughs> short answer is for those who, who want to continue to have access to those office desktop applications, that is something that we can offer um, to those who want it. And I can definitely see that being useful for certain staff members. I'm thinking of Matthew in particular. Um, with big Excel sheets, um, I feel like with certain features in Excel, um, it, it really makes sense maybe to have the, the Excel desktop application versus, you know, using Google Sheets within the web browser. I, I can see the benefit there. And yeah, Renee needs Excel 100%, Christine as well. Um, so yes, we, we are happy to, to have licenses, uh, provide licenses for those applications. The only thing to keep in mind is when it comes to document collaboration, that is best done within the web browser. If you are in a document with other people, you want to be working within the web browser because if one person is accessing the document within uh, Excel, for example, the desktop app, and another person is accessing the document within the web browser using Google Sheets, um, issues are going to come up uh, in terms of reconciling changes in the document from one to the other. Whereas if everybody 
is in Google Sheets within the web browser for document collaboration, there won't be any issues. It's a very seamless experience. Christine. I have two questions. One of them is, um, does Google Meet have the same capabilities as Zoom does? I just don't use it too often to know. It does not have all of the features that Zoom does. I think, and I, I haven't used Google Meet a ton myself. Uh, I know that it didn't have a breakout feature. Um, it might still not have a breakout feature. Do, does anybody know that to a certainty? Does, does Google Meet offer breakouts? I'm not sure. Um, so it's it, that and you know other features, I, I think, Zoom is much more robust than Google Meet is, but you know, for the purposes of a straightforward meeting, I think Google Meet would suffice. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. And I used uh, Zoom in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And so there's been something that's been coming up. Whenever I schedule a Zoom meeting, it will also include the Microsoft Teams link to join the meeting at the bottom of every single invite regardless of anything else, um, maybe this is a question for offline, but it made me think of this. Is there mm -hmm. a way to turn that off? I've been really confusing people. So these are meetings, are you manually creating these meetings with an Outlook or is this, uh, does it involve uh, integration with something else like Calendly, for example? No, this would be me manually scheduling them through, um, through Outlook yeah. and then through Zoom. Okay. What I can, what what I have seen is when I'm creating a new meeting uh, within Outlook Calendar, there's a toggle on the page um, as to whether it's a Teams meeting or not a Teams meeting, and that whether that toggle is on by default or off by default might be a setting that you're able to change. Oh. I think it's off by default for me. Uh, but it might be that it's on by default for you. So when you're creating a meeting, it's automatically attaching uh, Microsoft Teams meeting credentials to it. But I think if, if you open up a new meeting dialog, you should see a little toggle button there. And it might just be a matter of just making sure that you turn that toggle off before you send the meeting. Um, but I'm happy to work with you one on one uh, on this issue. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah. Jason, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm in the office, so I, I don't know if anyone else has their hand up, but um, yep. not Google Meet, does someone external, well, I guess this is a general question, do people have to have Gmail accounts in order to be on a Google Meet call, uh, access the, the folders that um, Cassandra was showing? Mm -hmm. is this that need to require of anyone external that we might be meeting with? Yeah, so let's, let me uh, tackle that, you know, one service at a time. So when it comes to Google Meet, um, maybe, uh, I'm actually not sure, Do, are Gmail accounts required for Google Meet? I, I wish I knew this off the top of my head, but I don't know to a certainty. Um, I know I had to Google log in one time, Jason, I think when we were looking for a Salesforce um, consultant and I remember yeah. I was locked out and very lost. So I at least needed to log in once to use it. Okay, good to know. Um, Gail, I'm, I'm making, making a note of that uh, particular question. Um, wire, no account. Uh, I'm going to follow up with you about that, and I'll, I'll post in the network staff channel so that everybody uh, knows the answer to that question. Regarding Google Drive, um, having a Google account is not strictly necessary depending on how you set up the, the sharing settings for whichever files or folders you're sharing. There is uh, one sharing setting where you're able to make the files or folders available to anybody on the internet, um, whether they have a Google account or not. So in that case, a Google account would not be required. But just keep in mind that if something is shared in that manner, there's no way to control access to it. So it would be a link that's theoretically available to anybody on the internet. So you just wanna make sure that 
you're only sending it to people who should have access to the link. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and looks like Re uh, Renee has an answer here. You don't need a Google account to participate in uh, meet video meetings. However, if you don't have a Google account, the meeting organizer or somebody from the organization must grant you access to the meeting. So that's where we saw um, you know, what you might have seen within Teams or Zoom. They'll pop up in the meeting, and then somebody just has to click the, the admit button to allow them to enter. Um, so that's great. Thank you so much for looking that up, Renee. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, again, we're, we're a few minutes over, but I'm happy to uh, take any other questions if there are any. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I hope that you got some good information out of this meeting. I know that I did. I'm very impressed with uh, how Cassandra was using Google Drive. It's given me a lot of ideas. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of other questions are going to come up you know, as we're proceeding down the path of uh, performing this migration. Uh, I am happy to field questions at any time. You can reach out to me directly. Uh, and like I mentioned during staff meeting, I'm going to be working you know, one on one with people uh, regarding certain tasks like uh, email cleanup and then migrating your Windows, uh, your, the laptop login for your Windows laptop over from a Microsoft account to a local administrator account. Um, so much, much more to come. It's a lot of work to do. Um, but thank you so much for being here uh, and supporting this initiative. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, thanks so much.